the, the focus of, uh, of this talk. So essentially, second pre-image resistance, um, and we are given uh, an arbitrary uh, input message M, and uh, our goal is to find another message M prime that uh, maps to the same value under uh, the hash function. <coughs> um, so when we model the hash function as an ideal function, um, then uh, the actual, the concrete uh, security for these uh, three uh, requirements are two to the n divided by two for uh, collision resistance, essentially because of the birthday paradox, and uh, two to the n for pre-image and second pre-image resistance. Um, now assume that we have two uh, hash functions of uh, size n bits, and moreover assume that we, are wi uh, that we want to obtain more security than just uh, provided by each one of these hash functions. So uh, kind of a natural way to, uh, to, uh, to achieve this is uh, to concatenate uh, these two hash functions. So what we do is uh, define uh, what is known as the concatenation combiner, um, uh, uh, which is defi defined as follows on the message M, you simply concatenate the outputs of these two hash functions and we obtain uh, a, a new hash function of, uh, of size two n bits. Now this, uh, this is a very well known construction that has been analyzed a lot and actually has been used in practice at least uh, until a few years ago. Okay, so assuming that these two hash functions H1 and H2 are ideal and unrelated, then uh, you kind of uh, would expect them to provide security um, that, uh, uh, similar, that is similar to a two n bit hash function as, uh, as uh, given here. Okay, now in practice, we don't like to, uh, to implement hash functions on uh, arbitrary input uh, length. So what we do is we define a compression function, which is a, a function that, uh, that maps uh, uh, that compresses an arb uh, uh, sorry a fixed uh, input uh, uh, size uh, into a, a smaller uh, output size. Uh, so more formally, um, we define this uh, small uh, h uh, function uh, on input n bits, uh, uh, which we call the the state, and the, the other uh, part of the input of b bits, which we call the the message block size. Uh, and the output would be of, uh, of n bits. Now, uh, a standard way uh, to build a hash function from this uh, compression function is known as the miracle Damgard construction. Uh, again, very widely used in practice in SHA-1, uh, SHA-2, and uh, so forth. So uh, the main idea, uh, very, very quickly, is, uh, is as follows. So we take the message M, we uh, append some padding, and then append the the message length in bits such that the total message length would be uh, uh, divisible by B, which is the uh, uh, message block size. And then we divide the, uh, the, the, the padded message into, into blocks of size uh, uh, B. And then we uh, set this uh, initial state uh, X0 to be some fixed IV. And uh, we, we simply feed into this compression function the, the message blocks one, uh, uh, after the other until we uh, uh, finish processing the message and then we output this, uh, this final uh, state XL as the output of the hash function. Okay, so in this work I will be interested in the security of miracle Damgard uh, construction, uh, assuming that these compression functions are ideal or modeled as a random oracle, and I'm going to focus on the security of the concatenation combiner of miracle Damgard hash function. Now, in 2003, I'll say up to 2003, um, essentially miracle Damgard, as far as we knew, as far as what was uh, publicly known, miracle Damgard behaved li uh, exactly like an ideal hash function, and moreover, the concatenation of miracle Damgard hash function behaved uh, like uh, an, uh, a concatenation of ideal hash functions. However, in 2004, in a very, uh, uh, very well-known result, Antoine Zhu showed that, in fact, the concatenation combiner of miracle Damgard hash functions was not much stronger than a single uh, hash function. In fact, the, this result was, uh, 
was more general than, uh, than what I just mentioned, but then this is essentially what we care about in this work. Um, so this was in 2004, and uh, a year later in 2005, Kelsey and Schneer showed that in fact, a miracle down guard hash function itself was not ideal. So what they did is they presented the second free image attack uh, on this uh, construction, which is faster than two to the n. So I'm going to review very quickly this attack because uh, it actually, uh, um, I'm going to use this uh, uh, later in this, uh, in this talk. So uh, assume we are given a padded message, uh, m1, m2 up to uh, ml uh, message blocks, and we want to, to find another m prime such that h of m prime is equal to h of m. Uh, so the first thing uh, we do is uh, we just uh, uh, compute the intermediate uh, states on the, that are uh, evaluated, uh, that are uh, generated by evaluating uh, the, the message blocks. And now we're, we're going to start from, from this, uh, this IV, and we're going to uh, input some, uh, some message blocks M prime, and our goal would be to hit one of these, uh, these XIs, one of these targets. Uh, so how much work do we need to until we hit uh, one of these targets? Essentially, this, uh, each one of these targets is n bits, and then we have L targets, so each target, uh, each, uh, sorry, each, uh, each, uh, each trial with uh, uh, this M prime succeeds with probability about L divided by uh, two to the N, so we expect uh, to succeed uh, after about two to the N divided by L trials. And after we succeed, uh, we can try to, uh, uh, concatenate uh, um, to this uh, to this m prime uh, the remainder uh, the actually the suffix of uh, of the uh, input message so that the computation will be the same and and we can uh, hope to get this uh, uh, the, uh, the same output so we get this uh, second pre image however this uh, does not really work uh, because it is foiled by the uh, miracle dumbguard message message length padding right so we have now two messages, but their length is not the same, so uh, at the end, we'll, uh, what will be appended is, is uh, a different value, so we won't get the same uh, output. Um, so how can we solve this? So what uh, Kelsey and Schneier did is build what is known as an expandable message, so we can visual, visualize it like a spring. So we start from the IV, we have the spring, and then it ends at some message X, and we essentially apply the same thing. We hit the target, and once we hit the target, then uh, the spring can expand, and uh, we get uh, we can actually get this uh, uh, these two messages, uh, which are different and uh, and have the same length and uh, and actually have the same output. And the total complexity will be about two to the n divided by l. Okay, so this was in 2005. Uh, so we have this uh, second pre-image attack. And uh, now I'm going to uh, move on into this, uh, to this work. So actually this remained uh, the, the state of the art with respect to this constructions and uh, I would say in the last 10 years or so. But now I'm going to show you something, uh, uh, some uh, improvement. So actually I'm going to show you the, that this value is not optimal. So uh, we can uh, compute the second free image for the concatenation of miracle Damgard hash functions in less than two to the n time. Uh, but this, gi uh, given that the, the input message is sufficiently long. And this is, uh, I would say, a bit surprising, uh, because if you uh, would uh, uh, look back, uh, I would say, uh, a bit more than 10 years ago, then we thought that miracle Damgard hash function uh, behaved like an ideal hash function. But now this shows that, in fact, uh, not only miracle Damgard is not ideal, but in fact, the concatenation of two miracle Damgard hash functions is still not as strong as uh, an ideal hash function. Okay, so in this sense, this is uh, a bit surprising, I would say. Okay, so what, what, what are we trying to do? So we're trying to find a second pre-image for this concatenation combiner. Essentially, we're trying to find two different messages, M and M prime, such that H1 of M prime equals H1 of M, and H2 of M, M prime equals H2 of M. Okay, so we're trying to simultaneously hit two targets, H1 of M and H2 of M, and we want to do this faster than two to the N. Okay, so let's try a very natural approach that is very similar to what Kelsey and Schneier did. So uh, assume that we're given our padded message uh, with blocks M1 through ML, 
so we can uh, look at these two hash functions and uh, evaluate the, the states generated by a computation of the, of the method. So we have this, uh, these xi's and yi's, and now we, we actually do something very similar to before. We start from iv1, iv2, we build this, uh, the springs uh, that ended x and y, and now we're trying to hit this xi, yi target with some arbitrary uh, message blocks m, uh, m uh, prime. So this, uh, this looks very simple and it actually works. Uh, the problem is that this is not efficient. Why is it not efficient? Because now each target has two n bits, right? So now every trial succeeds with probability L divided by two to the two n. Okay, so uh, now the attack will succeed after two to the two n divided by L and this will be larger than two to the n given that the message size is smaller than two to the n. Of course, if the message size is at least two to the n, uh, then uh, just generating the states will take more than two to the n time. So the conclusion would be the, that this standard approach does not work, it's uh, not efficient. So we're, we're going to have to use some uh, different approach. Okay, so um, the different approach will be as follows. So what we're going to do is actually select a single target, xi, yi, that will be uh, actually much, more, much easier to hit than the other target. And we're going to hit it not just with a single message block, we're going to hit it with a specially crafted message that will denote uh, by w1 up to wj. So just to uh, simplify notation, I'm going to uh, define uh, this uh, generalized compression function at h star, which will be defined on this uh, state x and the concatenation of uh, uh, wi up to wj. It will just be uh, defined as applying h to this uh, initial state x uh, with w1, then w2 up uh, to wj. Okay, so this is just to ease notation. And, uh, and using this notation, so the, the picture is as follows. So we have uh, our uh, states, xi's and yi's. We have their the, 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 the special target, xi, yi, that we want to hit. And uh, here, uh, we, we start from x and y, and we, uh, we feed in this wi to, uh, w, to wj to both hash functions, and we want to hit this xi, yi uh, using these uh, generalized compression functions, uh, h, uh, h, h1 star and h2 star. Okay, so this is the picture. So now, of course, I need to tell you how to select this target and how, how, do, uh, how do we actually craft this message. So in order to do that, I'm going to take one step backwards and, to, uh, and I'm going to go back to the level of a single hash function. So what, we're going to, what we uh, will do is as follows. So assume we have this compression function, so let us fix this message block to zero. Okay, so this essentially defines uh, a function uh, which we'll call a f, uh, and uh, essentially f of x equals, uh, equals h uh, on input x and the fixed message block of zero. Um, so it's easy to see that uh, f of x is the mapping from n to n bits. And this, uh, this function f actually uh, can be used to define a graph where the nodes of the graph are the states and there is an edge from x to y if f of x equals y. And of course, uh, th because this f is uh, a mapping on n bits, then this uh, f can be iterated many times. And uh, actually, we'll be interested in, in the states that are obtained after applying f many times. So we start from x, and we'll be interested in the states that appear here on the right. Okay, so let us fix some parameter uh, d. And we'll define what, uh, what we call a deep iterate to be a, a node which is of depth at least d in the graph. So we'll be interested in these uh, blue nodes here. Okay, after this definition, le let's go back to our original problem. And uh, we'll look at our uh, two compression functions, h1 and h2. And let us define f1 of x to be h1 of x with fixed input zero and f2 of y to be a a h2 of y with input zero. Okay, um, so now I'm going to tell you exactly how I'm going to pick this single target. I told you that we pick a single target for the attack, and I'm going to pick the single target as follows. So I want xi to be a deep iterate in f1, and I want yi to be a deep iterate in f2. Okay, so 
uh, this is essentially the target that I'm going to try to hit. Okay, so what I'm actually trying to do now, given this, uh, given this, uh, uh, this target, is uh, as follows. So we want an efficient algorithm that, given arbitrary states x and y, and deep iterates uh, x uh, prime and y prime, finds uh, this uh, w1 up to wj such that uh, uh, essentially uh, the evaluation of h1 uh, star and h2 star on this uh, wi uh, uh, up to wj hits this x prime and y prime. Okay, so how does the algorithm work? Um, well, I think by now it's quite intuitive that uh, uh, what, what we're trying to do, um, uh, the, 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 the form of the message that uh, I, will, uh, I will construct is as follows. So um, this W1 I'm, I'm going to fix to some arbitrary, uh, not to fix, but uh, rather to vary to, uh, to be uh, some arbitrary block. And, and then I'm going to append a, a, a chain of zeros. Okay, and I'm go this is the form of the messages that I'm going to, uh, to apply to try to hit the target. Okay, and uh, during the, the computation of this message, I'm going to store all the encountered states, and I'm going to stop once I collide with the previously encountered states, because this actually will allow me to perform some look-ahead uh, procedure. Okay, so let's see an example. Um, so assume we have this deep iterates x prime and y prime, and uh, we have the, our compression function uh, h1 and h2. Uh, so, uh, we start from x and y, we we pick some uh, value for w1, say b1, and we evaluate the compression function, we get x1 and, uh, uh, and y1, and now we, uh, we just want to append zeros and see what happens. Okay, so let's uh, start from here. Let's uh, append zero, meaning apply f1, until we reach a previously encountered state, and then we, we stop, and similarly, uh, we do the same uh, on the bottom hash function. Okay, so you can see that this trial essentially didn't succeed because we're trying to hit x, x prime and y prime. Uh, and so I'm going to repeat this uh, until, I, until I succeed by selecting different values for this b1. Okay, so essentially this, was, this is the picture that uh, I showed you before. So the first trial didn't succeed, but now I can select a new value for this first uh, uh, message block. Let's try b2. So now uh, in b2, you can see that this one then succeed, it cycled. This one, uh, this uh, uh, trial here also didn't uh, reach x prime because it hits the previously evaluated value. But know that once I hit this value here, I can stop because I already know that uh, this, uh, this uh, trial failed. Okay, so now uh, with B3, uh, for example, you can see here that uh, we actually hit x prime and y prime, but uh, th this is not quite right because we hit them with a different uh, different message, okay, because here we appended four uh, zeros and here six, and we actually need to hit them simultaneously with the same message. Okay, and finally, we were lucky with before, we hit them with a, with a suffix of uh, five uh, zeros. Uh, once again, you, you can see that I can actually stop the evaluation here, because, uh, because be uh, if I know that this uh, node here is uh, at uh, distance three from x prime, then once I hit it, then I know this node is of distance four and this is of distance five. Okay, so we actually can use some look ahead procedure here to optimize the algorithm. And in fact, this is exactly why this algorithm uh, is, more, uh, is more efficient than, uh, than standard algorithms uh, that uh, uh, you, would, uh, you would think about. Okay. Um, so to conclude, I showed uh, that the concatenation of, uh, of two Merkle downguard hash function is in fact uh, weaker than uh, a single ideal hash function. Um, so in particular, I described uh, a, a second pre-image attack um, that is uh, faster than two to the n. Now I didn't have, uh, I didn't really have a lot of time to get into uh, complexity evaluations and so forth, but there is a trade-off between the, the, the input length of the message and the complexity of the attack. And, and in fact, uh, the attack will only be faster than two to the n for messages which are longer than two to the two n divided by seven, and the optimal complexity of the attack is going to be two to the three n uh, divided by four. 
Obviously, these attacks are essentially not practical because in, in practice we're using quite large uh, values of n, which are at least uh, 160, but uh, I think they still give some uh, insights about the uh, security of hash functions. Um, finally, uh, what we did is actually we used a, a new application of random mappings and a cryptanalysis of uh, concatenation uh, of uh, um, the concatenated hash function. And, but in fact, we can use them um, uh, to improve cryptanalysis of other well-known uh, um, um, hash function uh, combiners. And we can use them uh, to, uh, uh, for example, to improve the best known attack on, uh, uh, on another well-known uh, combiner, which is the XOR combiner. There we get the pre-image attack, which is faster than uh, uh, what was previously known. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, so this is a fun result. I, I wanted to ask, how did you, I, one thing I missed from your presentation, how did you know which of the intermediate states were deep iterates? Okay, so I, di I actually didn't describe that explicitly, but what uh, we do is uh, we, compu we compute many deep it iterates uh, offline, and just see which ones uh, we just match them. There is no, there is no, uh, I would say, smart way to do this. Right. You do this just by brute force. And That's why actually we need long messages, because we 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 need them to match. We need a lot of uh, states such that one of them will be a deep iterate. And did you did you um, implement this for small cases? To yeah. Yeah. Uh, for 32 bits, yeah, yeah, it seems to work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's go. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, when you look at the iterates of the two uh, mappings, uh, you enter into a cycle if the message uh, length is uh, bigger than uh, k to the n over two, and uh, with good probability, the two cycle lengths are going to be relatively prime, so uh, is there a way how to use this in order to automatically get the expendable message by uh, uh, if you uh, get into the two cycles uh, in the wrong way, you continue until you uh, get uh, to the uh, same desired points along the cycle. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, what you're doing or? Uh, no, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not doing that, uh, but uh, it is actually possible also to use the cycle structure in order to uh, to get these attacks, but uh, the, according to my calculations, this will not give better, a better attack. So I actually thought about this, but uh, I don't think th it will give an improvement. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, if there are no other questions, let's uh, thank Itai again. And I think there will be, yeah, I think in eight minutes or something like this, there will be the, the tutorial. So if you need to go to the restroom, this is your chance.